the fuck off. You want us to try to turn the lights out, or? Uh, no, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Everyone's okay. Yeah, all right, uh, good evening everybody. My name is Stephen Wixson. I'm a recent graduate uh, in astrophysics at the University of Calgary. And I'm here on behalf of the Friends of Science, who I'm uh, very happy uh, were willing to uh, set up a presentation for me. And I just want to clarify that I have not received any funding from the oil industry whatsoever. I'm just really interested in uh, paleoclimate and uh, the climate history of the last a thousand years. And uh, so I have a picture here of two polar bears and they are discussing hockey sticks and uh, what they're going to do as they prepare to engage in the arena of climate politics. Okay, so the first uh, slide I want to show you Sorry about this. Uh, first slide I want to show you is a temperature reconstruction of the last one, uh, 1,000 years from year 900 AD to 1990. And it uh, is from the IPCC second assessment report in 1995. It represents the traditional view of climate history of the last uh, millennium. And two events are uh, shown in the diagram. We have the medieval warm period which lasts from about the 10th century on until the 14th century, uh, characterized by warmer climates in Europe and other parts of the world. And then we also have the Little Ice Age, lasting from about the 14th century to the 19th century, characterized by uh, slightly co uh, cooler conditions on the order of uh, one or two degrees Celsius less than today. And Sorry about this, you can't see the modern, uh, the modern warm period, which is kind of like a recovery from the Little Ice Age to uh, where we are today. Okay, so the medieval warm period is uh, one of the best indicators we have of these historical temperature variations is historical accounts from various parts of the world. Um, one of the very good indicators uh, of the warmer conditions in the medieval warm period is the fact that vineyards existed in England. And uh, that's suggested by the opening lines of Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. When that April with its shower suit and drought of March have pursed the root and bathed every vine in sweet liquor of which virtue engendered in the flavor. And, and uh, Another indicator of the warmer conditions in the medieval warm period is the uh, Viking settlement of Greenland and North America. The warmer temperatures in the early centuries of the last millennium allowed Viking longships to sail through ice-free waters, and as a result, they colonized uh, areas of southern Greenland. They actually grew wheat and raised sheep and cattle and buried their dead in ground that is now permanently frozen. So you can't really do that today. And also I have a picture here of a uh, medieval tree stump. It's a tree stump left over from the high middle ages, which is now existing above the tree line. And this is actually a picture from California. So that suggests the medieval warm period occurred in North America as well as Europe. And moving on to the uh, Little Ice Age. When the Little Ice Age set in in the 14th century, the Viking settlements on Greenland uh, were abandoned as the Viking settlers found it uh, difficult to cope with the cooler conditions. And uh, one of the other great indicators of the cooler conditions in the Little Ice Age is uh, the paintings that were drawn at this time. This here on the left is a painting that was drawn of the uh, Mont Blanc region of the French Alps. And here is a picture of the same area today at roughly the same time of year, and we can see a significant difference in the extent of the glacier. Uh, other occurrences in the Little Ice Age were the uh, River Thames freezing over in England, Canals of Holland froze over. New York Harbor froze over uh, during the 17th century. 
and it was possible to walk from Staten Island to Manhattan uh, across the ice in the wintertime. And uh, this is a picture, this is a painting from the Flemish painter Henrik Aberkamp, and it shows people uh, standing on the ice, and uh, we of course see some more hockey sticks um, on the ice. And uh, this is a famous painting of George Washington crossing uh, an icy river, Delaware. So during the time of the American Revolution, uh, colder conditions would allow ice <coughs> to form in the river Delaware, which doesn't uh, happen today. So what was the cause of the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age, this is historical temperature variations? Was it man-made greenhouse gases? Well, probably not. The uh, traditional explanation is the sun. Solar activity is known to vary over time with something called sunspots. And sunspots are basically uh, just dark regions on the surface of the sun. And they're areas of uh, intense magnetic activity. And they tend to increase solar output. So the more sunspots you see on the surface of the sun, the, uh, the more solar output uh, tends, to, tends to be. And uh, we have a sunspot record that goes all the way back to the early 1600s, um, to the days of Galileo, who was one of the first, first uh, people to figure out how to make observations of the sun without blinking for the rest of his life. Okay, so this red line here, Steve, could you convert the uh, escape out of the slideshow part so we can see the other end of the graph if you just use the yeah. button? Just, just try sliding your hand. Yeah. <laughs> the escape out of it, we can probably see the whole thing. Just escape. Okay. Just escape. A trick didn't work. Okay, just okay. like this? Yeah. Well, now we can see the graph. It's yeah. smaller, but we can see it. All right, that's, that's good. Okay, so uh, this red uh, data set here is the uh, sunspot record for the last 400 years, roughly, and it's compared with the traditional view of temperature reconstruction over the last uh, 1,100 years. And as you can see, it's a pretty good match. The uh, period of time in the mid-17th century here is known as the Maunder Minimum, and that was uh, a period of time where there were virtually... No sunspots observed on the surface of the sun for a few decades, and it correlates very nicely with the lowest point in the Little Ice Age, the mid 17th century. Uh, so I also have this uh, data set in blue is beryllium 10 isotope proxy record uh, in the Greenland ice sheet, and beryllium 10 is acts as a uh, solar activity proxy because beryllium 10 is vastly more abundant in cosmic rays and supernova. So the more <coughs> beryllium tin you see uh, trapped in the ice indicates uh, more cosmic rays being incident on the Earth and uh, hence a uh, weaker solar